Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the four main group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. Please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. You can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to look at amoebic dysentery, caused by Intomoeba histolytica. Histolytica? I hope I pronounced that right. Um, so these are the Intomoeba histolytica, are enteric protozoans with a worldwide distribution. It is thought to infect as much as 10% of the world's population. Intomoeba histologica is a major cause of amoebic dysentery. What is amoebic dysentery? Well, it's essentially inflammation, inflammatory diarrhea, together with many other things such as ulcers and really painful gut area. Intomoeba histolytica has two main forms. One is a cyst form, which is the infective form. It is spherical in shape with refractile walls. Then we have the trophozoite form, which is the mobile form. It is about 15 to 30 micrometers and is uh, shaped like an amoeba, hence the name. Let's look at how um, intermoeba histolytica infects a human body by looking at its life cycle and how it causes amoebic dysentery. So here I am drawing a human, and here is the GI tract. I am drawing the gastrointestinal tract, the GI tract, because um, Intermoeba histolytica enters the body predominantly through the mouth and then goes through the digestive tract, causing its stuff. Now, before continuing on, we must know that Intermoeba histolytica is uh, can cause either an invasive infection or a non-invasive infection. A non-invasive infection occurs 90% of the time and is obviously not as severe as the name suggests. However, an invasive infection occurs 10% of the time, which is a lot, and can cause some serious problems. So, We'll firstly, we will first follow a non-invasive infection, which occurs 90% of the cases, in 90% of the cases. So, intermoeba histolytica cysts are the infective form of this uh, pro protozoa. Ingestion of fecally contaminated water or food containing um, intermoeba histolytica cysts can be ingested through the mouth. So these cysts can come from contaminated food or water, fecally contaminated food or water. The cysts will move through the mouth, down the esophagus, into the stomach. Here, the cysts are in the stomach. The cysts are resistant to the gastric environment and just passes through towards the small intestine. So these cysts pass and move into the small intestines. Each cyst can divide and produce eight trophozoi, the mobile form of intermoeba histolytica, in the small intestine. So this process is known as excystation. excystation. And this is where the cysts produce um, trophozoites in the small intestines. These trophozoites will then move into the colon of the large intestines, where it will establish colonization. Let's zoom in and see what happens in a non-invasive infection by Intomoeba histolytica. Here is the colonic epithelial cells of the large intestines. Uh, here we have the mucus layer covering these epithelial cells. The histolytica trophozoites will uh, essentially go just be on the surface of this mucus and begin multiplying by binary fusion. The trophozoites will colonize in the mucus layer and form new cysts. This process is called encystation, where they make new cysts. So here we have the trophozoites, which will just colonize the colon of the large intestines and just produce a lot of cysts. And this is the non-invasive infection. The cyst will just exit out of the body in stool, in the feces, and then the cysts can infect new humans through contamination, by contaminating food or water. 
So essentially, in the non-invasive infection, these trophozoites will live within the human asymptomatically and might produce some discomfort and some diarrhea, but nothing invasive, hence the name non-invasive infection, and the cysts will just exit out of the body. How about in an invasive infection? What happens then? Well, let's take a look. So here again, we have the colonic epithelial cells and the mucus. In an invasive infection, the trophozoites will invade and colonize the colonic epithelial cells. And this will cause the epithelial cells to lice, to die. And this will create ulcers within the large intestines. And of course, because they're trying to invade a, a cell within the body, there will be an immune response. For example, neutrophils will respond to the invasion and cause further damage by, um, through, the, through lysing itself. And so essentially this will aggravate the whole process and will create ulcers, as you can see. So the epithelials will start developing ulcers within the colon of the large intestines. And then it will just essentially damage this whole epithelial layer and mucus, and then the trophozoite can then move into the bloodstream. When in the bloodstream, the trophozoite can target other organs. So, invasive infection is when the, the trophozoites, through the bloodstream, can infect uh, other organs, such as the liver, the lungs, and rarely, the brain. So, for example, this trophozoite can infect the liver, forming liver abscesses, or it can form the lung, forming lung abscesses, which is not very common. Or very rarely, it can go into the brain and form brain abscesses. It can cause brain abscesses formation. So essentially, from all this, we, can, we know that the invasive infection, which, which constitutes about 10% of entamoeba histolytica infections, is very serious. It can cause definitely inflammatory diarrhea, which is a characteristic of amoeba, amoeba dysentery. It can cause leukocytosis. It can potentially cause amoebic liver abscess formation and rarely lung and brain abscesses. It can also cause colitis and ulcers, uh, which is exactly the same thing, ulcerative colitis, sort of the same, which is actually a very uh, big characteristic of amoebic dysentery, the ulcer formation in the large intestine, in the colon. And so because of this, you can, and because of inflammatory diarrhea, amoebic dysentery is characterized by blood and mucus in stool. Now, how would you treat amoebic histolytica infections, especially the invasive ones? Well, you treat it with a group of drugs called azoles, particularly metronidazole. Diagnosis of intermoeba histolytica infection is through fecal examination of cysts, because the cysts come out of the feces in stool. So from all this, we know that an intermoeba histolytica infection can be non-invasive or invasive and can cause amoebic dysentery, which is pretty serious. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe. And comment.